Hey, welcome back everybody. Good Friday. Hopefully we had an all right week out there and I got an update here for you on what we're going to expect over really the next week or so across the country. And uh, it's going to go from kind of fall like weather to near winter weather in a lot of places. We have a big time cold front on the way uh, that I'm tracking for you going really through the start of this week, but those impacts are going to be felt uh, probably through most of the week ahead. Uh, now, a couple of housekeeping things here at the beginning. Uh, I'm currently on fall break, so uh, I probably will not have a video. In fact, I'll just tell you right now, I will not have a video tomorrow, Sunday, and probably not Monday either. Uh, I'm going to head home and uh, see family. I haven't been there since uh, July. It's been a while, uh, and it's fall break, so I figured I'd just kind of take an all-around break uh, and kind of just, uh, you know, reset and uh, get ready for whatever next, you know, hurdle the weather throws at us, which uh, the way this year has gone, who knows what that could be. Um, so again, just going to go ahead and let you know that. Um, I did also want to start by talking about the Northern Lights a little bit last night and what a show it was. Again, I mentioned it in yesterday's video. Uh, I told you it could happen, it could not happen, but the ingredients were there on the table. And uh, sure enough, those ingredients came together. Uh, we got quite the spectacular show. This was my view here in North Carolina, uh, just outside of Charlotte, by about 50 miles away from the light pollution. Uh, you can see here, this is all this uh, Carolina cotton crop uh, growing here in the foreground and then the northern lights above it. Uh, this was about uh, midnight, a little after midnight, closer to one in the morning, uh, which is another reason why I didn't have a video out this morning. <laughs> uh, as you can imagine, I was pretty tired, still am. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was my view. Uh, Definitely let me know if you saw the Northern Lights, if you got out there and took a look. Uh, most of us had pretty good viewing conditions. So again, we are uh, really quite blessed considering how uh, really destructive the weather has been over the past couple of weeks. It was nice to get something nice and calm uh, and just kind of beautiful to look at. So just wanted to briefly mention that and talk about it. All right, current satellite view. So what's going on out there? Uh, well, we do have this big time occluded low pressure up into Canada uh, here at the top of your screen, this big uh, kind of front down to uh, the south of that. That is well out of here. That kind of brought that nicer weather earlier in the week. But what's next is another big pocket of cold air currently trapped up into Canada. Uh, and this, you can already see the beginning of it, uh, kind of the front here is beginning to sag southward. Uh, and this is what's going to bring us a big time change up in the weather. Uh, and to be fair, it's already been relatively nice for many of us. It hasn't felt like summer really east of the Mississippi for a couple of days or a week now. Um, but this is really going to reinforce that fall like air going into the week ahead. Now, current watches, warnings, advisories, and precipitation on the map, um, yeah, really not much going on, which is a, you know, a real blessing. Again, it has been a crazy couple of weeks here. Uh, so we'll take the break. We'll enjoy it. Now, we do have some precipitation to talk about up in the Pacific Northwest. We've got some rain showers moving through Washington and Oregon. Uh, we've got some rain showers back up through the Dakotas and Montana. We even have some showers up here into portions of Canada uh, through portions of Ontario and Quebec, uh, kind of crossing between those provinces uh, as that front kind of begins to work on through. And in fact, there's this, excuse me, this is kind of going to be a two-part front. Uh, this is the first part that's moving through Canada right now, and then there's going to be a second part behind it. Uh, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But again, uh, overall, things are really quiet there on the map, and uh, we will take it because, again, it has been a crazy, uh, a crazy couple of weeks here. All right, our 500 millibar height anomaly map. Um, this is for tomorrow. Actually, let me back this up a little bit so we can kind of get the full picture. Uh, this is this evening and afternoon, and here's what I want you to notice. One shot of cold air here. Uh, and then watch what happens behind that. So this weekend starting out, there's that first shot of cold air that dives southward into uh, New England, uh, kind of hitting you folks up into Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And then behind it, a bigger shot of cold air or that second punch I was talking about dives much further south uh, into the northeast, brings all of these very low heights, these very below average temperatures. Uh, and then it gets all the way down with this positively tilted trough into the southeast of the United States, the Carolinas, Georgia, even Florida getting in uh, on this much uh, or well below average temperatures here by the middle of the week. Um, and then eventually clears out of here and a big time ridge builds in about a week from now. So the shot of cold air might not last forever, but can, uh, but uh, adding up the nice air we had this week compared, or excuse me, let me start that sentence over. Adding the nice air we had at the start of this week, plus this reinforcing shot through uh, the week ahead, overall, uh, it's going to be a nice little stretch of weather here for the middle of October. All right, next 48 hours or so across the lower 48. Again, here's that first shot moving up through the northeast going into this uh, weekend, really starting tonight into tomorrow. We could see some showers from Maine down through Vermont, New Hampshire, and even into upstate New York. 
Um, but uh, that clears out of here relatively quickly. And by Saturday afternoon, uh, things are pretty quiet. We have some showers down towards Florida, and we have what is our second shot of cold air uh, beginning to show up on our map here. You'll notice some precipitation there into portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Uh, again, that's the start of that next uh, cold front. Uh, and you can see it really blossoms with low pressure forming along that front by overnight Saturday into Sunday morning here. Uh, and you'll notice precipitation beginning to break out due to that low pressure as our front begins to work on in behind it and cold air uh, kind of begins to ooze south by Sunday afternoon and then into early next week. Now, time this front out for you. I think the best way to do that is with our dew point map. Again, already pretty nice air across the country. This is tomorrow morning, Saturday. Uh, again, most of us seeing pretty low dew points, pretty dry air in place. Uh, here's that first shot. Again, look at those dew points crashing up into New, into New England by Saturday afternoon and evening. Uh, and then here comes that second shot. Look at these well uh, below average dew point values, really dry, nice air. This is Monday morning into Monday afternoon, continuing to cross the country. And by Tuesday afternoon, uh, you know, many of us are into probably some of the driest air we've seen so far uh, this year, obviously besides the winter months, but you know, through this fall. Uh, and uh, it kind of hangs around for a while. This is Wednesday afternoon into Thursday afternoon, even into Friday afternoon. Uh, and then you'll notice by next weekend, uh, we do see a return to more moist air and dew points out into the plains. Uh, and I will add that could lead to a severe weather risk out here, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more uh, in the next video whenever I come back uh, early next week. But I am watching for a severe threat uh, out into the plains about a week or so from now. All right, time to stop precipitation-wise, kind of picking up where we left off. Let me back up here. This is Sunday morning and into afternoon. Again, that low pressure you saw on the first model developing here, seeing that precipitation here along that warm front on the northern side uh, beginning to break out. And what happens here uh, is this strengthens pretty good, and you are already noticing some mountain snow forming here uh, Monday morning. Uh, we've got uh, mountain snow picking up through portions of Pennsylvania, New York, especially upstate New York, uh, even into interior New England. Uh, and then the storm strengthens, becomes deeper, pulls north. That cold air advection really kicks in on the backside. Uh, and then look at all this precipitation on the backside. This is Tuesday evening. Uh, we've got widespread snow falling into the mountains of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, New York State, especially the mountains of upstate New York, uh, seeing some, you know, pretty good snow. And in fact, this would be accumulating. Uh, so we could see our first kind of white ground by the time we get to this coming Wednesday. Uh, and then also an increase in lake effect precipitation with that. Notice all these bands coming off the Great Lakes uh, that likely rain for most of us, but could be mixing with snow in the higher elevations. Uh, as again, we are getting to the middle of October. And then you'll notice things calm down after that for the rest of the week. All right, so what are the chances of some snow falling here? Well, the GFS is pretty excited about this. Uh, these are the ensemble members from the GFS. Look at this, Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon, a high chance of accumulating snowfall greater than an inch uh, here into the mountains of upstate New York, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, uh, and into portions of Maine as well. Uh, you are beginning to see that... Um, chance of snowfall increasing. So definitely, I would consider this the first winter storm of the year for a lot of folks. And if we take a look uh, at uh, snowfall totals, this is the GFS ensembles, and this is snow depth change. So this does a pretty good job uh, of taking into account ground temperatures and all the other things and gives a pretty realistic amount of snow. And you'll notice up here in upstate New York, you know, two to five inches of snow uh, into northern New Hampshire, into portions of uh, Maine near the Canadian border, one to three inches of snow. Um, so definitely not something to write off. You'll even notice some snow trying to accumulate, especially on those grassy surfaces uh, as far south as the New York, Pennsylvania state line. And maybe even those higher elevations of West Virginia could pick up a quick dusting of snow out of this northwest flow event uh, on the backside of this low pressure. Uh, the European model also showing the same general areas, uh, just lower totals. But again, showing accumulating snowfall into the lower 48 uh, outside of the Rocky Mountains for the first time uh, this year. So very exciting stuff. I'm a big fan of winter weather, uh, as I'm sure many of you are as well. And I'm sure a lot of us are looking forward to this transition uh, into a cooler, snowier time period uh, as we kind of get towards the middle and end of October. 
All right, temperature anomalies. Uh, already, again, pretty average to below average across the east, but look at this blue coming in. Uh, and by the time we get to this Tuesday afternoon, I mean, we're well below average, near 20, maybe even 25 degrees below what we should be this time of year through portions of the Appalachia chain, especially from West Virginia northbound, but even south of there uh, into the Carolinas, getting well below average by Wednesday. Wednesday morning low temperatures. I mean, we're going to be in the 30s and 40s for a lot of folks here, well south into the Tennessee River Valley, into portions of the Carolinas, uh, even Alabama, Mississippi. Uh, again, really everyone east of the Mississippi getting in on this cold air, even the state of Florida uh, getting in on those below average temperatures. And that hangs around through the week. This is Thursday afternoon, uh, Friday afternoon, and then by next weekend, again, that ridge tries to build back in and warm us up. But overall, uh, a very nice week ahead here in the temperature department. All right, uh, and we don't want to talk about it, but we do have to. I am briefly going to touch on the tropics, and I'll start with this. I've gotten many text messages and social media comments and questions asking me, uh, Gerald, is there another big storm coming? I keep seeing on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or wherever you get your weather news from uh, that we're going to get, you know, Helene and Milton 3.0. Um, and I will say this, there is a chance of another storm developing in the Caribbean. That part is true, uh, but the chance of the United States impacts with this are very low, I would say, and here's why. Uh, well, let, let's start with the setup. So again, the GFS, much like uh, Helene, we do get kind of this Central American gyre uh, that may try to form a storm here this coming week. Uh, this is Thursday on the GFS. You'll notice low pressure spinning up and even getting very strong into a major hurricane. But watch what happens. This is this Friday. Uh, this kind of hooks it inland and then just moves into Satural, uh, Central America, excuse me, uh, and then gets shredded apart by the mountains. So is it a United States problem? Uh, again, probably not, and here's why. Uh, main reason, that big cold front I just showed you and that big ridge right after is going to really block this from moving north. You'll notice, again, this huge ridge of high pressure over the east about a week from now after our cold front, uh, and that would push anything that forms into the Caribbean, again, here kind of towards the west into Central America. Could it sneak into the Gulf of Mexico? Maybe, uh, but I really don't see this becoming a Florida problem uh, or a southeast problem at this point in time. Now, if that changes, obviously I'll let you know, um, but right now we are not seeing any threat uh, towards the southeastern United States, and you can even see that kind of on the GFS ensembles here. Uh, let me uh, move my face out of the way a little bit more for you. Um, again, a lot of them do develop something, but many of them just kind of run this right into Central America. A couple members kind of uh, maybe try to pull further north here, but again, it's, it's a pretty small number right now. So we'll watch it for you. Right now, no major threat to the United States. Again, and if there is one, it'll be more than 10 days from now. Uh, so let's go ahead and just enjoy the next seven days, kind of get out there, uh, you know, enjoy some of this nicer weather and uh, just relax a little bit because it has been... Uh, again, a very hectic time. All right, folks, again, pretty short video. Um, uh, pretty busy today. Got to, a lot to do and some things to catch up on, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, again, reminder, no video tomorrow, no video Sunday, maybe a video Monday. If I do, it'll probably be Monday evening, uh, but definitely back by Tuesday at the latest. So, uh, All right, with that said, y'all folks have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Enjoy it, and I'll see you all next time.